Godot right now has the asset marketplace. Like, that's a thing that exists. But a lot of people are asking for an asset store more akin to what is offered by Unreal, what is offered by Unity. What exactly is the asset marketplace? Uh, what, is, what is the asset marketplace? And what would an asset store do differently that people are asking for? So what we have at the moment is called Asset Library. Oh, yep. And Sorry, library, it's yeah. basically, see, yeah, it's a repository with uh, a lot of projects that you can install directly from your editor. Mm -hmm. And those are all open source. Like, you know, they are free. You, you cannot buy, you cannot sell anything there. You just can download projects from there. And usually it's like an index of GitHub or GitLab or whatever, where they hosted like projects so you can get them from it. Um, so it's effectively like a software that's, repository. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's very simple. The functionality is very limited. You don't have any sort of user reviews. You don't have a lot of things. But you know, it's it's been working great for a long time. It's just that some features that people want are not there yet. Right. And um, the asset store would be the whole experience with the assets that you can buy and sell, and you know, maybe some stuff that is not exactly free mm -hmm. um, one thing that you know our community has a lot of programmers because a lot of game developers are also programmers and uh, i think that the asset library also will include more people in the community that are not from a programming background so if you make 3d models or stuff like that it's it's a great way to to get involved with the community we want to of course always incentivize open source licenses so that we're going to try to be always using the defaults that are open source so if you want to do it you know like selling or, or other kind of licenses you have to change from the drop down or things like that mm -hmm. but um yeah there's a lot of interest from a, a lot of people that are making tools that are very complicated and you know they deserve to get some pay and uh, so yeah providing those would be ideal um that's a bit the difference between what we have now and where we want to be. Well, the way it looks like from the outside, if I look at, like, say, the Unity store, for example, obviously there are people that make games with Unity, but there are a lot of people who their entire purpose of using that engine is making tools that other people are going to use in their games and then selling them for, you know, whatever price they want to be selling them for. So it sort of acts as, like, a, a new market that people can operate in making use of this tooling. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It it has created a lot of people that sustain themselves entirely by selling assets. Mm -hmm. um, it's not our goal, like just to to create that, but it's something that the community wants. And one thing that we do usually is that you know we are a community driven project. So if the community is interested in having that, that's something that we work on. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I think that for most projects at the moment, the asset library is enough, and it's quite good. Like. It has updates and new stuff every day. Um, but uh, yeah, some people, they just want to be a bit more, uh, I don't know how to say it, professional, let's say. <laughs> and they want to sell their own things. Well, I think also the reviews will be very handy and other features that we hopefully can include better with the with the engine. Mm -hmm. um, that would be like an upgrade to, to the entire ecosystem because you know, Godot is just the, the editor and the engine that you use and all that. But there's a lot of things that are around making a game, which is not happening inside Godot. And, you know, integrating those better would be ideal for the entire process of making a game. Do you have any examples of, like, what would be the case there? Because I've not used the engine for... myself. Yeah. Yeah, so let, let's say there's some audio libraries that you're like you have someone in your team that really likes a particular audio like proprietary thing and you want to include it in Godot. Right now you kind of have to go a little bit out of your way to find those integrations and install it and do it all that. So this would be like a very easy way to use those. And uh, uh, mostly our users at the moment are mostly indie developers and small studios, but recently like there has been a lot of people getting into that you know they want to use tools that are industry standards so you know getting them directly from the editor or like things like that would be making it easier of course it's not something that we would ever include because we are ne never going to be shipping proprietary code um but 
making making like an ecosystem that can live around the editor would be really nice for also making some of our users that are not selling games but are making tools you know make a living that would be ideal so it's about sort of providing the ability for people to do so if they would like to but not making that the main focus of the entire project sort of exactly. empowering people yeah, yeah. to this do what they be... want to be doing yeah, yeah this this is you know of course the foundation will take a percentage of the sales. It's going, we still haven't defined which is the number, but it's not going to be the same as in the other platform. It's going to be lower, probably. So um, but that will be a way for Steam us to... Takes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's that's probably not. 29.9, right? No, no, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, the thing is, uh, it's another way for us to, to get more funding and mm -hmm. to hire more people to work on the engine. Um, that's also always a balancing act because doing an initiative like this requires to have some people working on it. Uh, that's why we don't want to grow it and make it the sole focus of this because we are a nonprofit organization. Our goal is not to make money, it's to make the, the engine better. And I think this is a feature that will make the engine better and we won't be like dedicating all of our resources there. So it's just a, an add on on top of what we are doing mm -hmm. at the moment. No, that, that definitely makes sense. Um, I've been seeing a lot of really cool stuff being done with the engine, but I'm sure that if you provide the ability for people to, you know, just, like, I, okay, so I get that the whole, like, doing everything open source, like, that's great, but there are some people out there who simply, that's just not, like, their intention. Like, they are trying to, like... They're not doing it for the good of the community. They're, they're doing it because they are trying... Obviously, they're trying to make some people want to use, but they want to, like, actually profit from it. So I think... Yeah, I think, I, I think actually getting that set up is going to be incredibly powerful. I, I've heard people sort of... I, I, I did, like, a bit of, like, prior research on it. It seems like people have been asking for a store for a really long time. Like way before the foundation even existed. Like, it seems like pretty much since since Godot's had any sort of traction, any sort of community that's formed around it, it seems like at least a couple of people have mentioned the idea of having a... Because obviously someone could always do, like, a third-party store, but having something that is directly connected to the engine, like, that's something people seem to have always wanted. Yeah, yeah. I think also it comes like if you use other engines, like say Unity, a lot of people are used to just buying three, four assets, like uh, three, four like things from the asset store and put a game together real quick and, you know, get like hit the ground running with it, right? Like just you buy three, four stuff, like one for terrain editor, like some models and, you know, some weather system. And then you have just like a game already kind of. Um, and that's something you don't have at the moment. And, you know, like the store, also like was requested for a long time, but we didn't have like the structure to being able to, to do it. We do now, that's the main difference. Um, there's some things that are a bit more tricky in terms of, you know, handling the payments and, you know, the, the fact that this is a nonprofit organization. So like, why are you making a store that will kind of like pay users uh, that are selling stuff and all that? So once we figure all that, all that out and we notice that, yeah, we can do it, we, we are just working on it. But yeah, I think it's the, the, the necessity from many devs to just not reinvent the wheel, I guess. Um, there's this convenience of using blocks and pieces from other people that are already made solutions, you know, that speeds up a lot of the development. Even if it's not keeping so it yeah. in, like, the final product, at least using it during the prototyping phase, uh, prototyping phase and then replacing it as you go further along, sort of quickly getting your idea up and running and then bring in your own style as you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's just one of the things that I've seen, you know, being used a lot. So uh, there's a lot, right? Like you, you need audio packs, you know, things like that. Having it, you can go theoretically to a platform like each IO, buy it, download it, include it. Yeah. It's also like the convenience and, you know, also the trustworthiness of those stores. There are some stores that are claiming to be like the Godot store or stuff like that, which are not handled by the, the organization. Mm -hmm. uh, 
but they don't get a lot of traction because yeah, the users want to see something coming from us mm -hmm. and yeah, took us longer than we anticipated, but you know, we slowly, but surely we're getting there. <laughs> I presume you don't want to mention when a possibility of it happening is. It's sort of like, because if you say a date or you say a rough estimate, someone's going to hold you to that. Yeah, yeah, no, no, it, it's, you know, it, as soon as possible, we would like it to have it like yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. But there are some things that just need to happen first. And yeah, like we're going to do like a first, like a small program where we invite some like handpicked creators to test the platform to be the first one to use it. Like we got in touch with some people that are also already like successful in other platforms to see what they think about it. And once we have like that small test program and all that, we're gonna start opening slowly to to different people to sign up and then releasing it like to everybody. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be like a small role. That it's not gonna be like from one day to the other yeah. that everything's open. But but yeah, there, there's a lot of challenges that maybe like are a bit out of scope. But yeah, I think the idea of an asset store is something that if you've been in programming, it's like I could program that in a weekend, right? But the, the legal part of like the, the technical, the not technical parts are too complicated. Like mm -hmm. people submitting assets that are not from, you know, like they don't have the, the rights to, to, to publish mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah. AI content at the moment or spam. Like there's so many, like it's too many weird stuff online. As soon as you include money, you know, things get a little bit more complicated. So mm -hmm. we need to, to make it good.